Well, uh, welcome everybody to Evening with PodCamp. We are down here in uh, Work Hard Pittsburgh in the dungeon in the basement in the uh, wonderful studios. Uh, we'll be talking a bit about that. Uh, everybody is under glass. If you're joining us on video, this is this is this is awesome. They're in the green screen room, and uh, it, it, it's I feel non-threatened by them, and they're just making gestures at me and everything, and uh, and this is great. Um, I, and and I feel more comfortable because we're behind my microphones. I'm here with a fellow podcaster. Uh, uh, Buzzy Torek of the Epicast Network joins me. How you doing, Buzzy? Hey, how's everyone out there? Good, good. Uh, so, so uh, this is like a conference. So, I literally, you know, uh, the Epicast Network is something I've been, I've been, um, I can't get away from. <laughs> Can we put it that way? Um, and uh, and it seems like ne- every time I turn around, there's a new podcast that's popped up, and it's got your tag on it, and uh, and it's really awesome to see somebody growing in Pittsburgh. So I, I guess first of all, I want to get into you know, what is Epicast as I guess a concept. Uh, so one night I uh, went to Lava Lounge open mic and uh, started talking to the guy booking the comics, and I was here, built this space at a work hard Pittsburgh, had a I was a fan of podcasts, and we were looking to kind of start a podcast company. And this guy, uh, Nick, who's my partner, um, he was booking comics at the time. So we started doing one at Lava Lounge and uh, realized, hey, this is cool. Let's just make a network in Pittsburgh because we didn't know anyone was doing it at the time. Um, Fast forward a few months, and we had like three shows to launch. Um, The one that we were doing after the open mic kind of failed and um we started a couple shows and i think all three of those shows are still not, are still here po- and popular one's ian insects show one is drinking partners and oh, one was lust and loathing and we cut that because it became a mess after a while was that the so, one was that the one with the strippers yep we okay had a, we had a podcast at a strip club so that was one because I, I when I, I started i think i met you guys at pod camp last year maybe yeah, maybe yeah. The, last year and, and and i checked out stuff and i think the first one i saw was less than yeah, we were like a two months old at the time I think. and i'm yeah. just like i you know I, 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 i'm technically typically pro wrestling and technology podcast and i'm just like this is this is a party podcast yeah it's, it's very much so yeah so um so you know obviously you're you're, you're looking at uh it looks like you started mostly with comedians right yeah, we yeah, because I was a fan of Rogan, and I learned about the L.A. comedian scene just mm-hmm. via one podcast, and became fans of everyone else's podcasts through that. And then um, we started a couple comedy based podcasts, and after that, we realized, hey, this makes sense, and let's do some other, you know, other kind of genres. So we um, started a successful one called Professor Buzzkill. Um, he debunks historical myths. He's an Ox- Oxford doctorate. Um, it's a whole another style than anything we've ever done, and it's really popular. History seems to do well. It's a tip for other podcasters. Get into history. Um, we are branching out and doing sports podcasts now, um, health and fitness. We have a couple clients that are in L.A. now that are number one in all of iTunes, actually. Um, you can find that at Harder to Kill Radio and Wellness Force Radio. So Nice, nice. Yeah. So you, you've, you've uh, expanded out a bit. So you just wanted a kind of general, like, we want to do everything podcasting going into What's, this or is it? I always had a bigger vision of like Epicast being like a vice.com. Like I want to, I don't want to just limit ourselves to podcasting. Right. We've built like our relationships and the network based on podcasting. But uh, I always see us being able to do videos and, and follow like chefs around getting drunk at night or, you know, just random like cooking segments or uh, just, you know, uh, covering political things, you know, just everything uh, based out of Pittsburgh and like a Pittsburgh based vice kind of is where I had a vision going for that. And now we're coming to the point now where we have to like, let's get good. We're good at podcasts. Let's get good at doing video. Let's get good. You know, you, you do great video work all the time. So we're trying to look to emulate those kind of things and be good at um, becoming a YouTube content manage, manager and like seeking out talent like we have with podcasting to do good on our YouTube. So, so we're definitely, uh, you and I are coming from different cloths here. Cause I mean, I really kind of started as a kind of a hobbyist podcaster and it's grown into, uh, for me finding these other opportunities. Um, you know, what were the considerations kind of going into, okay, no, this is a business. This isn't just something we're going to do. And eh, maybe we'll find advertisers. It sounds like you're, you're, you were, you had a pretty good plan going in. Uh, we didn't, <laughs> we didn't no, we at didn't. all. <laughs> it, was, it was just like, all right, let's do this. And we learned everything trial trial and error. But um, you had a, a more focus, like a, like a, for me, I, I was just talking about this this week on our podcast day kind of uh, uh, stuff uh, on our network. Uh, 
basically the shows I do, I'm going to do anyways, right? Yeah. Uh, like the decision is made, whether I, it's bringing in money or something, it's, it's, it's with my friends, it's fun. It does create op other opportunities for them, for me, for everything. But, you know, for you, it sounds like you have a little more of a model going into it. Yeah, um, it's, it's tricky because we, like, we want to bring everybody on, but we want workers and doers. So we've, we always, like, there's so many people, everyone wants to do a podcast. And we give them, like, all right, go take your iPhone, set it on the table, and do, like, two or three podcasts and see how it does. And our turnover for that, like, how many people have actually done that has been, like, zero. So, mm -hmm. um, and that's the big thing. Like, we need people that are going to be here, that are going to push it online, that are going to, and that's, that's as much of a deciding factor as it is for the content because you can have the best content in the world and if no one's pushing it and working on it, it takes more than just the network to do that at the moment at least. Um, and I think we found a good, we have a good balance of people that are pushing and, and, and moving that are doing things, you know. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about more about the discovery. Like I said, I think the the quote I like to uh, put out there is uh, uh, Sreed Srivenson from the, the Met was here at Point Park College uh, a few months ago. And he says, the best way for nobody to see your video is just uh, post it on YouTube and do nothing. Yes, uh, exactly. Yeah. And it, it sounds like it's it's kind of like that idea around it. How are you kind of encouraging these guys to kind of work together as a network? Right now, we're uh, rolling out a huge, uh, Nick's working on it, like a huge sheet of how to uh, promote yourself, how to schedule tweets with the hashtag. Um, and there's ways to use uh, these new technology tools that will let you just see your your friends on the network podcasting, like anything mm -hmm. tagged with Epicast or anything that we're tweeting. And you can, I can put Ian and Drinking Partners and Does This Hold Up and everybody on a list and scroll down and start and retweet everything and even though that's a cheap way to do it like because you're not sitting there you know watching live the whole time they get it's efficient you know and that's what we're we're still learning every day how to be efficient how to get more retweets how to get better twitter reach how to you know minimize uh engineering time because that's another bottleneck you know some a lot of people do podcasts and put it right out but i like to compress an EQ and limit and doing that for 20 people is like <laughs> things that I barely understand. That's another thing. I think we come from two different, I, I'm kind of a video first kind of person, obviously from yeah. the, you see the stuff that I'm doing in it and, and saying, well, we're going to do video. And I'm very, uh, I believe in kind of the raw nature of podcasting. You know, we leave the, the coughs and the hiccups in there and I've seen you, I've been down here seeing you edit some of the podcasts yeah, so and, and watching you meticulous over things and talking about this Skype stuff. And I'm just like, I've never noticed that with Skype before. You're completely <laughs> right. Now I notice it every time. Yeah, yeah. And now I'm noticing in every one of my Skype based podcasts I listen it to. It's like that my friend like they're not like the professional ones, you know, by some of the bigger networks. Um so I mean, are you like kind of an audio engineer kind of background or or where'd you come from for that? Yeah, I um in my high school we had a audio um technology program that Duquesne University modeled theirs after. So had a teacher that was doing big things, had his own record company, record label, um, was able to write a big grant for music technology. We were outfitted with all the latest Apple G5 computers, with, like Ooh. first people with 19-inch wide screens and everything. And we had a full-out like central studio hub with an isolation booth and then little music technology uh, like workstations all around, all isolated, all can be patch bait into this main hub. And I spent my senior year, I mean, I was in there 10th grade, 11th grade, but my senior year, I might have had four classes based in music technology. And then I would stay after school and record bands and basically learned audio. And uh, Josh, the owner of Work Hard Pittsburgh, I actually interned at his recording studio after high school before I decided to pay to go to school for that or not. And uh, started recording bands, um, being an audio engineer, doing that, running live sound and uh, doing that on my own out of my basement. And then this place came up, built it for a year and now we're here. Mm -hmm. So I've been an audio guy forever. So that's awesome. That's awesome. I hope you'll learn a few audio tricks from you here as we go. Um, but because that's that that rig over there is scary for one thing. <laughs> I don't know if we'll put a picture of this online or yet. something. You don't yeah. know how to use it yet. <laughs> I don't know. I've never seen such a wide screen. And you had all the Facebook messages across when I walked in earlier. It was uh, it was pretty. It, like I like I kind of want that just for tweet deck. Yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, just, that's like, what, just that's spread that out. That's what's really cool about the twenty one to nine ratio screens, which is <laughs> no one in the world has them. This is like the only building probably in Pittsburgh with two of them. Um, but they're like an ultra wide, almost they're movie theater wide screens that you can. Um, it's perfect for editing and stuff because you can put your timeline on and stretch it all the way across, and it's ultra wide. So oh, I want that for video editing now. 
Okay. Uh, <laughs> with the laptop that's going to be that wide, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that would be fun. To just freaking Fold it out. Carry around, and you're going to have to put it in like kind of a bandolier across your back or something like that. Uh, you mentioned here work, work Hard Pittsburgh. Some may know it was a former name, the hardware store, of course. Um, I just recently, I think, the, completed a branding uh, kind of swap up there. Um, so uh, I've been here about a month officially uh, under Sorgatron Media. And uh, I've, I've, it feels like everybody here has a podcast with you guys. I, I, I mean, I don't know if it just feels like it, but... but uh, yeah, there, there kind of is now. <laughs> um, so we have Professor Buzzkill, and right. um, he started a podcast and out of necessity needed a place to work and ended up getting a key here. Um, knowledge from Juice Crew 412. Um, does a lot of political work and needed a desk and um, <laughs> just started out of here. And now he... Like, what's cool is... Anybody can get a desk here right now, and if they're interested in doing a podcast and it works out, like them being here and just being right upstairs mm -hmm. all the time really helps me out, like to be on my shit for, you know, pushing content out. Like, you know, we're up to 20 podcasts now, so I have my clients Jeez. that I, I know I need to get need to get their stuff out, but like some stuff, like knowledge, come down and show me where this is. It's so much easier than sending emails out and managing that kind of stuff. So, mm -hmm. but uh, work hard's been great and for workflow, you know, people, the more desk here, the or Epicast, like friends and family, like even like you being here today, helping me set up the live stream was huge. Like I wouldn't have been able to do it myself. So mm -hmm. that's that's rad. We need more doers that are up to date on the technology. It is yeah, and it's a it's a we're live streaming right now. Um, I'm hoping we have video from that uh, afterwards that you guys will be seeing afterwards. We're still figuring out all the all the all the yeah. nuts and bolts of this thing. It's really complicated, uh, and really uh, hopefully uh, you know, a lot of other opportunity for you know. It, to me, uh, you know, podcasting is. Uh, you know, I, I think it's kind of a misnomer because I think video is is a component to a lot of things. Uh, and it can be you know, obviously, you know, the way I do my stuff is very kind of both audio and video. Uh, but uh, what do you, go ahead. That's where it's going, right? Like it makes right, sense. Right, right. Like it, like that's that's why we are Epicast TV to be like a video. You know, we wanted to include that the whole time. Mm -hmm. We started with webcams and that didn't work at all. So. <laughs> Now it's how to get this whole rig on location and be efficient with that, which mm -hmm. is probably not possible unless you're getting paid lots of money and could hire people to do it with you, you know? Exactly, exactly, which is different than my philosophy. It was like, let's build in a, a technology kind of groove here in my ba corner, my basement, and mm -hmm. let everybody come to me and stream and everything. Um, that's Oh, you should see my videos from like 2010. They're just like <laughs> a stack of CRT monitors behind me to bring in their Skypes because I didn't know how to switch anybody in. Yeah, There's no yeah. inputs. I couldn't figure it out until we got the right software and hookups. So even that. Uh, so so what do you think about uh, journaling? Well, you know, it's podcast day as <laughs> International Podcast Day. I think the international is a new tag. We talked to uh, one of the uh, uh, founders of it last year on the Awesome Cast, of course. Um, what are you listening to? Um, I just, we just asked this question on that, the last that, podcast. That, that you um, don't make. <laughs> um, I really like Bill Burr's new podcast because he's ridiculous. It's not new at all either. Monday Morning Podcast. Um, listen to that. I'm a big fan of Radio Lab from NPR because the audio design works just incredible. I just Google Google over it because it's incredible. Um, um, Startup, which is a podcast about starting up a podcast company. So it's very meta and like like it's it's what we're doing. So it's cool to learn from that. Like he he used to be the engineer on This American Life from NPR. Quit that. Now is starting a podcast company. But he, it's, he is immediately going out and shopping for people to invest in him. And what we did was build build the back end now, and we need to do the shopping. Like as Epicast, Epicast needs to make that right. move next. So Right, right, so. exactly. And that's, it, it, I, I, I'm glad I'm not the only one that feels kind of weird and meta when listening to the podcast group therapy than the podcast methods of the world. Yeah, You're like, yeah. well, you know, hey, let's see how everybody how, else is doing. How, everybody learns so much from podcasting. I've learned so much from podcasting, whether it, mm -hmm. you know, it's about health and fitness or just, you know, what what comedians are doing, where they're going to be. You know, I hear you learn so much and, and you can get super, super, super niche, you know, which is, and those podcasts seem to be doing more like better than, you know, than the bland blanket, you know, we're going to cover politics, but if you're covering Pittsburgh politics for females, like that might do way better because it's such a centralized, like dedicated crowd. So, 
Right, right. So, I mean, what do you think about generally? Um, um, you know, you mentioned about you know, kind of starting a podcast company. Uh, now, I've always kind of looked at you know, I'm seeing Kevin Smith doing their thing. I think you, know, you mentioned Joe Rogan earlier, and or NPR is really kind of uh, exploding the whole podcast idea. And, and you know, our articles we've had in the past year, podcasting is back as if it went somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, <sighs> what do you think are the challenges? You guys, obviously, you know, you don't have um, you know a radio personality coming over. Um, to to automatically give you that credibility. Um, what's the uphill kind of battle for you guys? Um, we're bottlenecked with efficiency and people that know how to engineer. Like mm-hmm. so, it's just one, me right now engineering all the podcast. Um, we're bottlenecked with trying to write group emails and and sending stuff out. It's just too much work for two people. So now we're building a team. Um, yeah, that's that's the challenge. It, and it's also a challenge to get. To get spread over, you know, national, air, you know, podcast airwaves. So whoever's doing that, you know, whoever's doing good, it seems, and and the money coming from it, it's like the top five percent, and no one else gets a chunk of the change. So right. there's there's advertising companies stepping in now that I that looks like they're taking care of that. Um, mid not mid roll, mid rolls like the big the big guys, but there's um Pod Wallet and mm-hmm. um, a couple more people have contacted us, and it seems like what they do is share. They can get the agreement from, say, you know. 1-800 copies or whatever, and they'll split that between four podcasts rather than, you know, give it to one person, which helps a ton. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Are, are you concerned with, I, I know I, I'm a big uh, This Week in Tech uh, kind of follower and listen to a lot of their stuff, and I know they're very big about, like, well, we turn stuff down because we want to make sure it's a fit for our audience. Yeah, do, for do, sure. Do you, do you, are you concerned with that? Like, if you would go into, like, kind of this bigger group like this? Well, what's cool is they come to you. So, like, they okay. they know, like, they're going to, they look at your numbers, they look at your numbers nationally. Like, mm-hmm. we do better for some of our podcasts. Um, we do way better in California than we do in P- Pittsburgh, which is right. weird. But right. that's because Pittsburgh. I've, I've seen that with one of my yeah. kind of health clients too. Yeah. yeah, and it's because everyone in California listens to podcasts. Mm-hmm. So how can we – it's easy to throw it up and the people that listen to podcasts will grab it. But how do we get people that not that aren't into the podcast word or, you know, how many? How do we convert listeners? And I think that's happening very slowly over the last five years is, you know, double, double, double. It's doubling up. But um, and with podcasts like Serial and even like Startup, like it's becoming nationally – it, the national awareness of podcasts is becoming more and more prevalent, you know. Um, but yeah, I don't. I've noticed an a interesting um, um, thing that happens with you, you guys and your groups because you guys are really big on uh, doing kind of live events. Yeah. And kind of working, you know, working around that. And, you know, of course, I, I suppose it kind of works better with the comedians and everything. For sure. Can you talk a little bit about that and the idea of doing the live podcasting and where that kind of fits into your what you guys um, are doing. So Drinking Partners is one of our podcasts and it's probably our most popular for live because mm-hmm. um, those guys are comedians, but they have a craft beer focus. So what's cool is we go to all the breweries and have good relationships with all those guys and basically help them out. And uh, in turn, like we, they, they give us free beer and, you know, we're, we're getting paid to be there a lot of th- the time. And um, it's entertaining for anyone at the brewery usually, like if, as long as the speakers are set up and people can hear us, it seems to go well. Um, and it just, it's almost like the new, you know, rock show, you know, let's go see a live podcast. It's very, you know, there's 20 people going to a podcast compared to 2000 for a rock show, but, um, Mm -hmm. it's, it's more and more because it's more and more known. I think that's the live, the live aspects could be entertaining, especially if you have comedians, if you have entertainers as your host, like it makes sense to put them in a situation where they can do their job even better. And a live podcast, it's a night and day feel from, like we're live right now on the internet, but we're not in front of mm-hmm. an, a big audience. You know, when we got them under the glass over yeah. there, it's just like they're the even zoo. separate. There we, can't hear them. <laughs> we can't hear them applauding, and 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 uh, it's actually worse as well because then they're not also uh, 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 heckling us yes, as we're doing exactly. This. And so. that's the the comedians heckle a lot of the audience sometimes, which is fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it's like if you have a local following, doing the live kind of stuff is 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 cool. So we do like the Epicast present stuff, and we just mm-hmm. throw a party. Invite everyone we can in, and um, just have a big a big party. We do live podcasts. People sit behind the glass in here. Um, this year we had live music. We had live stand up. We full pint came and brought a ton of beer. So because we established live live podcast and podcast relationships with the breweries, it's easy for us to get people to give to us back. You know, um, for when we do big events. So. Awesome, awesome. I, I actually got to attend the uh, Does This Hold Up hundredth. 
uh, yeah. episode up there at the RK Comedy Theater. Love that place. I got to see, I uh, actually got to uh, film some stuff up there for for another production. Uh, great space up there. Uh, and, and it was really cool to, the, again, like that kind of vibe. I think Drinking Partners were a part of that. So they were hilarious on that show. And I, I forget who else was up there. Um, um, you know, that, that kind of thing just, just works so well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, especially with comedians too. Like that's what I think we, Epicast definitely has the Pittsburgh comedy thing under the belt because we dove into it so hard. I knew nothing about the Pittsburgh comedy scene mm -hmm. coming into this. And within a year, like I'm such a huge fan of it, which is nuts. Like, you know, there's so much going on in Pittsburgh and there's so many entertaining people that it's never ending. Like there's a list of 100 people I've not met yet. And mm -hmm. it's, I think uh, it's part of Epicast's job to put that on the map a little bit too. So. Definitely, definitely. It felt like uh, for several years, I felt like I, I may have been one of the couple of people that we all, we all like would have a drink at PodCamp each year together, and we felt like we're the only ones podcasting. Yeah. It's so awesome to see uh, just a bunch of it happening. And of yeah. course, Libsyn is here and everything. Uh, what do you think about you know uh, you know what's out there kind of you know in the Pittsburgh area that's kind of been interesting? I mean, are you seeing that kind of growth outside of what you guys are doing in your network? Um, yeah, it's, there's, and there's, I'm sure there's a ton of stuff that I've not heard yet, you know, cause mm -hmm. I'm busy, you know, engineering every day. Um, but there's, you know, the Pittsburgh, uh, podcast network. Um, I think there's a couple, Mike Wysocki is on with them. Jim Cran does work with them. Um, there's, uh, you guys do a ton of content all the time, nonstop, which is awesome to see. And the video works cool. It's always great. Um, trying to think there's. Like even within, I think there's like three beer, other beer podcasts in Pittsburgh. You know, Doug. Should Doug I drink that? Dot com, of yeah, course, for sure. representing tonight. Yeah, um, which is there's so many people doing. There's ones on startups. There's ones on you know, you know, politics and yeah. So the, Pittsburgh's a cool base to do creative stuff. Like with Google moving in, there's gonna be more and more people that are into this tech kind of deal and want like. There's going to be more and more to cover. There is every day right now. We're finding out. So yeah, it seems it seems like it's certainly. Uh, I mean, between like like you know functions like like next Pittsburgh out there, it's like yeah. this tech sector kind of idea is. Uh, it seems like it's for real here in Pittsburgh. For so, sure. Awesome. Um, well, uh, on that note, so so I didn't think of this part out entirely. I'd love to if anybody has any questions. So have you had any instances where uh, I know I was doing live events and. With drinking being involved, sometimes the conversations could get a little oh. colorful. Have you had any problems with any of the venues? I, it, the shows that I've done at bars and other festivals, we've been pretty good with it. But every once in a while, there's always somebody in the crowd who, who oh. throws a fit. Yeah. Because they don't want to be around this stuff for whatever reason. Yeah. You know, whatever okay. the topic is, and it doesn't have to be swearing. It's whatever you're talking about. Have you guys ever run into that, that issue with the drinking show? Luckily, we – because – our talent with that is usually comedians, um, and if we're at a brewery, they can they can handle that very well by either making fun of someone to the point of them being able to like or shutting up or um, yeah we the problem that we're having lately is the talent gets too inebriated and I have to spend two hours making cuts at the end of the episode, so it gets progressively worse and worse and worse um, as we're going on. But uh, no, they're usually pretty good about that, and if um, if someone doesn't like it, they are told to leave. Usually, the, the comedians are, have no problem uh, managing that. Now, if someone's at one of your live events and they like everything they see, how do they get a hold of you? Like, if say I'm having a beer fest or I'm having a special uh, beer and wine, or, sorry, beer and food pairing, or yeah. even wine and food pairing. Um, Twitter's easy because we're always on Twitter. Um, the website epicastnetwork.com um, works, or Partners Pod. If you're doing the craft beer thing, they that seems to be their focus and it's at partners pod on Twitter. You can get a hold of them that way. Um, yeah. And we usually, when we're doing live events, we have business cards laid out and stuff. So that's all I have for now. Thank you. That's all you have for now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I'm putting Missy on the spot next. <laughs> Just put that right. There you go. Um, yeah. If anybody else has any questions from the other room, come on, come on in and uh, we'll hand over the mic and, and kind of work around that. And looks like we might have a taker going on right now. So <laughs> It's nice. You can follow them in. You know, I don't have to worry about you know pointing and missing somebody. Come on in, pick up the mic. <laughs> this is it is like the, the the performance room a bit here. Yeah, just a little bit. Uh, so my question, and this is this is dealing with Sorg's stuff as well. You have twenty different podcasts on your network. How do you manage? That's that's the best question ever. We 
that's that's the struggle. That's, we're gonna have to I'm compare. asking. That's we're, the question we are asking ourselves right now, as much as possible. We're like, gonna have to compare notes after this. <laughs> yeah, and that's 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 it. Um, there's so much going on. A lot. What's cool is a lot of people do all their content themselves, and it's just a mutual relationship where, look, we'll push your stuff out. You pay pay us for the little bit of work that we take to put on your web, put on our website, and like we charge like a fifteen dollar monthly you know deal for us to retweet in, and do that work. And there's a lot of shows, even like does this hold up? We'll go out and live record them once in a while. And if they want to come to the studio ever, that's fine. Um, but they usually do their shows themselves, upload they, it themselves, and we just push. Like, and that's it's efficient on our end because we're just doing nothing but pushing content that's already created. We're not helping create it. I want to point out, does this hold up? They got a great setup at home. They are the best sounding guests I've ever had on Awesome Cast. And it I was it was amazing. And I still am annoyed to hell by the quality of their podcast when they do it at home still. So yeah, they, they have good it's good, but it's not up to par with where, where I'd like things to be. Well, that's also, and you're also, I, I, I definitely try to strive to be better and, and, and accept. And so I can actually hit publish on a post uh, when it's not perfect, uh, mm -hmm. it, which is, uh, you know, it, it, it's good to have that kind of like, this is the bar I want it to be. And we're going to get closer for sure every yeah. time. Right. So do you have anything else? Yeah, actually I do kind of have another question too. Um, obviously you, you deal with a variety of podcasts, do you have a favorite genre? Like if there was a perfect podcast for you, what would it be? I listen to comedy a lot, most, mostly because I'm a fan of comedy. Um, I, I like Does This Hold Up. Uh, there's people that either love or really hate their podcast, and it cracks me up like, like crazy every time I listen to it because it's so ridiculous. It's so over the top, and like it's not even a movie. Re it's a movie review podcast about old movies, but it's not – that it's, I got, it's I got them. Quite, quite honestly, I never get to the movie review part. Yeah, like 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 I, I've listened to like the first twenty minutes, and then it's it's like, wait, wasn't there supposed to be a movie in yeah, here somewhere? Yeah, yeah. And it's like uh, these insane commercials they've been coming up with the last uh, like couple of months have just been yeah. nuts. Yeah, at home acupuncture, uh, <laughs> ninja cleaning, or something like ninja home cleaning. Have a ninja come and like. And those guys aren't comedians, no, per se. They're, they're just guys doing a podcast. Yeah, and we'll, we, like, we'll sit in and have like a meeting with you know, like a bunch of Epicast comedian talent and those guys, and they crack us up more than mm -hmm. any, uh, any of the comedians. I think I was watching on your site yesterday. Was it them with drinking partners in yeah. here? And it just they just were just right there with them or yeah. even on stage Oh, yeah, they're there. super, super, super quick guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, they're, they're, they're completely down with me. They got a future on stage. We got another question from Doug. We're gonna make we make them walk back in here <laughs> oh, okay. for more for more for more comments. That's right. So, with the latest Google announcements, Sorg and I were kind of talking about this. On oh, Twitter. I was wondering if this is gonna come up. Well, I'm not gonna bring the one we talked about earlier up. Okay, but. maybe we'll talk about that later. So, <laughs> that's for the couch. Uh, so, with um, Chromecast coming out with the newest version for video, and then also now Chromecast Audio coming out, our content's gonna be more readily available to a lot of people. Uh, especially with the podcasting boom. Is that going to play into your mind when you're, I guess, when you're planning out your shows, like where your your content's going to be consumed from? Because with the audio, now we're all, we're going to be able to broadcast to our speakers in our house. For the video, you're going to have a lot, you're going to have a really better quality picture coming out of the new Google Chromecast, which I'm still trying to figure out the little dongle thing that hangs little cord that hangs off the side of that. My kids are so going to break that, but um, but that, that's something that's been in heard. my mind is the way that the new technology that's coming out from Google, I mean, is that something you guys think about? Like, okay, now how are we going to be able to maximize our show? And I think podcasting isn't there yet. Like we, we don't know. It's going to, it's going to go crazy soon. It seems like, like it's blowing up right now, but I think a big player is going to come in and try to, whether it's, you know, Spotify, you know, is supporting podcasts, but only, only the big guys, you know, they're not doing what iTunes and letting everyone have a fair shot. So who's to say there's not going to be an Instagram, like Clamor right now, CLMR, which is like an audio version of Instagram. Like who, that might be the way everyone finds their podcast. 18 soon. second audio. Yeah. We, we put our stuff through there just for discovery, if nothing else. Exactly. Yeah. And, that, and it's easy to get 50, 50 plays off a little, oh, yeah. you know, and it's, and that's, that might be a new wave that that's going to, yeah, we, we look to be as adaptable as possible. And I don't think that, um, uploading to a website and then having any app in the world download from that, you know, web from that link is the most efficient way. I don't know. I think there's going to be a standardized app that everyone's going to be using. You know, I, I think that's coming. Who's to say who's going to make that or 
And there's also being in all the places, you know, I know, yeah, uh, you know, you know, I know you guys are on Libsyn and you have some stuff on YouTube. Um, I struggle every day with, you know, okay, do we put this on here? Okay, we got, you know, you mentioned um, 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 Spotify, you have to be on Libsyn in order to put it on Spotify. So like, okay, there's a consideration. Then you have to pick, we picked from Spotify. To right, be right. Featured, and then I put is... stuff specifically on Spreaker just for the chance to get on iHeartRadio. Yeah. And those numbers, I'm looking at my numbers and it's worthwhile. It's, there's, really? Yeah. There's, awesome. there's like, well, there's a hundred people that weren't getting us over here. So, exactly. and, so. It, and it's from show to show, it's weird because it's like, um, you know, we're getting nuts and bolts here, I know. But uh, on certain shows, most of the people are coming from iHeartRadio. And then on some, some shows, most of the people are coming from Spreaker itself. Wow, so it, it's it's from genre to genre. It's, it's very, very different. And it's curious to see what pops there. But then you have, other you have people like, um, what is the radio, the app, the podcast radio app? Um, like uh, TuneIn? Tune in? No, it's, it's everybody. It's not iHeartRadio. It's um, shit. Just beyond pod. No. Oh, is it the CBS one? No, everyone uses it. It's um, Stitcher. Stitcher, yeah, Stitcher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and like, yeah, I, the, um, the, Stitcher takes your feed, yeah. downloads all your podcast, craps all over them with audio quality, and then 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 f- sends them out to the world. And then like we've looked at our our things and they, our stats, and they haven't been updated in a month, like from month to month. Like there's times where it doesn't move, and we know like I'm there playing stuff right. from you know from Stitcher, and and, and it's not converting. So. Mm-hmm. Their I have, stats are terrible. And yeah. they're not updating. I, shows that I know are released. My own shows that I know are released to the stream don't, don't update. Through. But it, 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 it's, you know, we have to depend on these other services, I think, is another issue. Yeah, and I have a podcast app for Android that I that just stopped working and won't pull any of my new episodes in. Mm-hmm. So, like, there's that's why I think that things are going to go to a centralized, you know, application or, you know, it's nice that iTunes gives us everybody a fair shot, and everybody mm-hmm. can be on iTunes at once. But on iOS and um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you're in iTunes, that's the unfortunate part there, of course. A um, lot of the the feeds pull from iTunes though, too. Right. So that's where like right. all the Android feeds pull from the i not not your um, Libsyn feed. They'll pull from the iTunes feed for some reason. So mm-hmm. that's strange. Well, I guess I don't know compatibility, whatever the case. It, it, it is definitely a hodgepodge, and I think that as again, you kind of you have to manage that. Um, you know what makes the most sense for us versus you know time to post it in all these places. Yeah, what um, time's best to post it? What hashtags right, work better? Right. What you know? How come we get double with a photo? You know, if, if you put a photo, you lose the podcast player. So like, there's so much <laughs> little nuts and bolts, and then where do you when do you find time to look at those analytics, put them out, chart them out? You know, mm-hmm. make better decisions because of it, and it's going to change next month anyway. So. That's that's the attack that we're you know, oh, and then and then battling. and then throw in video and yeah. uh, why did this video that's been getting fifteen hits yet of high response from like a hot high you know just you know response and commentary on YouTube it's all of a sudden has one hundred fifty hits on uh, on Facebook so yeah uh, and then of course Facebook will change that in six months too yep. so uh, face, Facebook's thing now is to bring in video I guess they're they're. Doing all that, I was hip to that as of like last week. I had no clue that everything has been changing that way. So I'm a, I despise Facebook. I hate everything about it. I hate posting on it. I hate putting my stuff on it because they own it. Like it's, it's, you know, they crap all over the quality of photos. Even be getting into photography now because out of necessity, and it's just Facebook annoys me. You can't, you can't get any <laughs> anybody to see anything unless you're paying for it. You know, right, right, exactly. I, mean, I know it's been a problem. Uh, for uh, you know, client works like, oh, you need a Facebook page, we do this and this, and we put all work into it, and it's just like, yeah, nobody's seeing it now because we're not paying anybody for it. Yep. And it's it's uh, it's disheartening, <laughs> but but everything's going to change, and that's the only thing that's consistent. So, uh, so anything other than that, you know, again, you guys are kind of more of a business focused kind of thing. People starting a podcast these days, whether it be for I want to make money at this thing, which I don't know if I advise against uh, towards that entirely uh, as a whole. <laughs> Good luck, guys. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's kind of the general thing. I and mean, be like, you know, what is your advice for somebody starting a podcast, uh, kind of general as hobby or or hope, you know, maybe for a business side? Um, create a- actually separate that. Can you give me advice for somebody that just wants to try a podcast, and advice for people that do want to do it for their business? Because you, 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 pod- you have a little bit of both in there. Yeah, if you just want to try a podcast, I'd say start doing them on your phone. Get good at it. Like it's just being behind a, a microphone, or just get get the time on task in. Like start doing that. You don't need you don't need anything. You can just use your. We have an, a popular podcast from Pittsburgh that is done all on an iPhone. Mm-hmm. I despise listening to it when I engineer it, but 
it it it's there and people people don't don't seem to mind that it's done on an iPhone and uh just record record your conversations and start getting better at, at having those conversations, which I'm not good at. I'd stutter all over the place and my mind's in a thousand places, which is why I'm not on podcasts ever. <laughs> um but uh and as to to make money was the second part of your question as a hobbyist. Yeah. And oh, as a maybe you're doing it for a business or you want to do maybe like yeah. you guys and say, if oh, you're I, ready, I want to do the business and network and make yeah. this big thing. Um, for show, show structure matters. We're seeing that a lot. Um, having a set thing that you do every time. Um, getting your ducks in order with with um, social media is huge. Like like we could do the best podcast in the world and Epicast can push it, but if you're not pushing it and creating a brand and developing um relationships with your fans like it's it's worthless you know you need you need the back end you need the you you need the content and you need the network of people that are gonna feed off your content what's the best thing you've experienced in your couple years in the the epicast network and uh and if you can what's the worst thing about dealing with it the worst thing is how busy things are and the stress it's just like we're doing a thousand things at once and trying to we need people to help, but it's we don't have time to teach them how to help, and it's, it's like a big bottleneck we're we're facing. It, 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 it's like a real business. Yeah, and the, and the best thing <laughs> is just the the buzz and how good things are going. Like the relation, our team of people that we do work with and our talent, like we call them the fam, the Epicast family. But like, I couldn't be happier with the people we're surrounded with and, and working with right now. And um, yeah, things are good. things are going good. It seems like everything's going in the right direction. It's just managing. Without managing that, without it falling apart right now. So, yeah. We're going to have a long conversation after the show, <laughs> by the way. Thank you so much, uh, Buzzy, with the Epicast Network, epicast.tv, right? Yes, or epicastnetwork.com. Well, good coverage there. Uh, check them out on all the social medias. Everything's linked over there. Very visual. They're a very visual network for podcasting, as, as we've been talking about as well. Of course, a photographer yourself. Um, and, uh, and, and of course, big thanks to work hard Pittsburgh for hosting us here again. Oh, yeah. it's amazing setup here, you know, although, you know, both of us are, are tenants as well around here as well uh, anymore. Uh, but work hard, pgh.com, um, definitely check them out. There's a lot of cool stuff coming out of here. If you're looking to make something, it's a good place to get started. And, um, and there's a lot of cool toys around too, as we've been uh, playing with today. <laughs> so, for sure. Um, so thank you so much. Check out podcamppittsburgh.com. There'll be plenty of events. We're uh, hoping to have evening with, uh, pod camp every few months here uh, and, and other things to help uh, get people together, get creative. And we hope you're still making something uh, because uh, that challenge is still there from pod camp. I want you guys making stuff and I want you to tell us about it. Uh, PG, PC PGH on the Twitter, pod camp Pittsburgh on the Facebook as well. And let us know what you've been making, especially since this year's pod camp, last year's pod camp, or you just maybe did it because you may you're on a podcast uh, doing something now um, off of uh, what you're hearing here tonight. So thank you so much. Great. Thank you so much.